On this episode, we have two incredible uh, professional groundskeepers who have truly shown throughout the experience that they have such a passion for so much more than just the actual groundskeeping, but for creating relationships. Uh, Holly and Maritza are two, uh, again, extremely outgoing people who are there to help those around them. Uh, Again, I've known Maritza for a while and meeting Holly for the first time, you can tell she just fit right in um, working with the crew and everything that was about this weekend. These two represented all of it and more. So um, it was great to get to talk to them about their careers and where they've been. Uh, Holly's actually a um, marketing manager for a church and again this is sort of her hobby uh, and it was really a really awesome perspective um, when it comes to seeing someone who has a passion for our industry without fully being in it um, and I, that's nothing she is 100% in it I'm sorry that was the wrong thing to say but um, to see her learn so much more about the women in this industry and being a part of it and being one of those women Uh, You could see her excitement, and again, I can't thank her enough for taking the time. Um, And with Maritza, she has always been a uh, shining light in this industry, always looking to grow uh, not just her own uh, crew or anything like that, but just the industry as a whole. Uh, And her excitement for everything that has to do with sports field management is unparalleled. Um, And we, we actually have a little bonus episode that we recorded uh, post event uh, about some mentors that she has and how critical it was to her career to have them um, and to truly be able to take a step back and understand the gravity of what this event was and how significant the work was and how much her work and the crew's work impact on not just our industry but really the world when it comes to seeing who a groundskeeper is and seeing the people that create the memories the people that set the stage you know uh i i've always held again nick mckenna's line uh where the game begins you know the new tagline for the sfma it's it's truly rooted in a groundskeeper and it it showed um with the chaos that was the weather of the weekend and um it truly was just incredible experience and i can't thank them enough uh, for allowing me to be a part of it um and holly and maritza this is an awesome episode you guys definitely don't want to miss out on it so uh, i hope you enjoy this episode of tiger turf talk all right welcome back to another day here in greenville uh, north carolina at the softball little league world series with the first ever all-female grounds crew. We are here with Miss Holly Robinette of the Charlotte Knights and Maritza Martinez of St. Louis City Soccer Club. Ooh, Got that it. right, there we go. Right so you guys have been here for a few days. How's it been? How's everything going? It's obviously coming to the end uh, last couple of days, but what's it been like to be here and just be a part of this crew? Holly, I'll let you take that one first. All right, <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been such an experience uh, just to be out here Turf management is really something only I do part-time, so coming out here, spending a full weekend, just fully immersed in the people, with the people and the culture of the experience, uh, it's really been great. Um, kind of makes me think, as I head back home, like, hmm, do I want to keep doing this? Yeah. How, what, yes. I, what is that going to look like <laughs> in the future? Yeah. What's the next yeah. steps, right? Yeah. 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 So it's been good, all around good. I mean, seeing everyone out here, you should definitely just... Solid yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For me, um, obviously no one. Yeah. Obviously no one has anything bad to say. I think we've all really enjoyed and could even say loved our time here and experience with one another. It's just so different than any other crew, obviously, that any of us have ever been on. And I think, I think a lot of us are almost at a loss for words to even describe it right now because we're just letting ourselves be in the moment and enjoy where we are without having to think about okay let me let me just figure out the words to describe this (laughs) this moment in time that is so amazing and just different than any other that I've ever had I think we're all going to come away from this in a few days and (laughs) actually be able to get our words together and sit down and think wow like 
that was process the whole yes the gravity of what you guys have done exactly. and again it what I what I have loved about it is it's it's really just another day at the office for you guys you just <laughs> you're doing everything you've done and you know what you're doing and it's just bing bang boom everything's done all right but the level in which this is like an impact for so many people uh, like you said, I think you guys will notice that when you get back and you see all the pictures and everything sort of comes together and it's just, it's, it's been incredible to be able to witness the whole thing and be able to talk to you guys about it and how everything is. Um, what has it meant to you really, again, I'll do, I'm sorry to pull the female card, but with <laughs> that, what has it meant to be an all female grounds crew here for the first time ever? Go ahead, Maritza. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just go back and forth. That's yeah. fine. Um, for me, just like I'm sure everyone else has answered, it's unimaginable, and that's kind of crazy to think about for the fact that there's so many of us here and so many more women that are reaching out that want to be a part of the next one, that sometimes it's easy for us to be at our jobs, mostly as the only females there, to think, wow, I'm the only one around. And it's amazing to see how many of us are almost coming out of the woodwork and feel joined and united, that there's so many that are just so qualified in every aspect of our field that we can have women in, obviously. Um, so for me, seeing that, I think I'm more motivated than anything else, right? I want to be like some of these women. I'm, I'm pushing to be better than myself for the younger kids so they can maybe one day look and be like, okay, I want to be like her. Like, she's doing something that I like. So motivation more than anything else, right? Yeah. I'd say the camaraderie that all of us have shared this weekend has been unparalleled. I mean, I'm, I'll go home and I'm friends with all the guys on our team for sure, but this is, like I said, this is something unparalleled, unmatched. Um, so to take that away is honestly a, a pretty exciting experience. Um, and just as we look like to the future, because we are the future of these next generations, I mean, we have several even younger girls out here who are like, this is the future of the mm -hmm. sport, and that um, that grass ceiling has <laughs> been broken, and it's it's still shattering across the board. So. Without a doubt. I love yeah. that. I love that. Um, so you brought it up right there. What has it been like to work with sort of that next generation? Obviously, last night you were talking about uh, a couple of the girls, and like it's just so cool to see. <laughs> what has it been like to sort of, again, when I talked to them earlier, I mean, they're, they're freaking out meeting you guys. Like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting them like for the first time. This is great. Like, what has that sort of been like to sort of be like the, the mentor, the one they look up to and have an impact like the one you guys are making here at this event? Do you want to take it or you want me to go? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take it. I feel like I don't have as much experience, so I'm also kind of the ones looking up to you guys. See, I wouldn't say that at all, Holly. Like. <laughs> Yeah, you might not have been in it as long as the OGs, as they like to call yeah. themselves. <laughs> like, we just haven't, that's fine. But I see the younger girls watching you. You're giving them way more than you're giving yourself credit for. 100%. Thanks. Thanks, seriously, you, seriously. You definitely, I mean... Don't, don't ever say the part-time thing is like... No. You're, no, the, you do a phenomenal <laughs> job. Again, All right, thanks, guys. half the people that I know that have worked in this industry don't do half of what you've been doing out there. So. Without a doubt. This has turned into a motivational <laughs> Yeah, this is it, guys. This is what it's like I think she's weekend. trying to recruit you to the industry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are yeah. awesome. This is my second time working with you, and every time I've been around you, every single day, every time, I've been like, wow, look yeah. at her go. Cool. So Thanks. if I'm I looking at you that. like yeah. that, yeah. imagine what these young yeah. kids are thinking. <laughs> Give yourself a little more credit. You're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, I'll speak on that then. <laughs> um, yes. It's exciting to see these younger girls. I mean, we have one here who's 16 years old, and Good she's old Liz. I mean, yeah, she's Precious. picking up the tricks of the trade, like, so quickly. Um, I mean, she's kind of the first to hop on anything. It's like, hey, does anybody want to try this? She's like, yeah, me, absolutely. And that's really encouraging to Other see. Other than me dragging her out to the drag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. For me, um... I don't feel like I'm old enough to have people looking up to me. I don't feel like I've just like I don't feel like I've been in the industry long it's enough. Not true, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna give you the same speech. Uh, yeah, me. motivational yeah, speeches. Yeah, are yeah. Now the way of Tiger Turf talk, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, starting out, I mean, I've stood on the same thing. I think the last time I spoke to you, Drew, that's what I said was that I wanted to push myself enough to where I could have younger kids look at me and be like, okay. I like what she's doing. I think I can do that. And not just me, like 
us sitting here motivating Holly to see herself as more than what she does. Mm -hmm. It's something as simple as that. Not only are we giving these younger people like tips and tricks of the trade, mm -hmm. but like life advice, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, especially again with an industry that the way it is, and you guys are again, you're breaking that grass ceiling, but. It's still difficult. Uh, we were talking to Leah, and she was talking about sort of like the added pressure of being a female in the industry. You know, everybody's looking up. Everybody's like, "Ooh, look at that!" Well, no, they're the same. <laughs> they're the same people, if not better. I always, t again, I probably said this like five times already, like this week. But the girls in my classes do better than the boys because a, they're more meticulous. They care what it looks like, and they're gonna not run into stuff because right. they're not gonna be dumb or anything like that. But. Um, it's great to see again sort of the um connection with that i know liz and julie and all of them are like it's so great to finally meet people that again every area of the industry all levels you say you haven't been in long enough you have okay <laughs> things like that where it's just incredible to see like their excitement and to see uh, snap and chat, you know. They, 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 Megan and Haley, we know your names. We know. I mean, we yeah. talked about it on their podcast. We did a little story, but they're they're very very young. Like they're, they said it's their fourth month in sort of the industry. Wow, wow. So I it's they're they're fresh out of uh, uh, transferring to a new program in turfgrass management versus what they were. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's awesome to see and how quick everybody picked it up and. <laughs> It's full-blown grounds crew now. Everybody knows what they're doing, and switches are seamless, and there's no issues, and it's great to watch. So um, something with that, um, we talked, it's like three months ago, two yeah, months ago. It was somewhere. right before I It was right before job. you were, yeah. So <laughs> what has that sort of been like, sort of taking on the new uh, job? And I mean, it's really cool because you're starting it. You're like part of the inaugural everything and that's always a really cool thing um what has it been like for you getting up to st louis and being able to transition into the new role <laughs> so i've been very open uh baseball is my first love mm -hmm. right that that's the one that made me fall in love with turf grass management um but moving up to st louis has pushed me out of my comfort zone which is something that i told myself i would do throughout my career i want to be well-rounded right it's harder to teach the next generation if you yourself don't know. So I'm pushing myself out of the, my comfort zone to show like, hey, it's okay to take a job that <laughs> yeah. you don't feel the most confident about because the point of it is to go and learn, right? No one starts a job perfect, no one ever will. So I'm having the greatest experience. I'm really lucky with our ownership. It's the ownership for my team is predominantly owned by women. And then That's the awesome. stadium, yeah, the stadium and the entire crew itself for the entire group um, predominantly run by women. So I'm very fortunate in that regard that I can actually look around my field and see women everywhere. I mean, literally on our construction sites, we have women heading up, like, architecture, engineering, like, everything across the board. You have these very capable women, and man... It's motivating. I mean, yeah. it makes me want to get up every day and mm -hmm. go to work and try to be as awesome as the women I've been around here and there. That's just who you are, though. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> I know it's motivating them, but you're just that person. You know, you bring the amazing energy to everything that you do. So for you, obviously, at Charlotte, it's one of the top minor league stadiums in the country when you talk about field facilities and whatnot. What has it been like for you, again, being part-time, being able to sort of again, grow to the point where I'm sure Matt trusts you with everything and anything he needs to get done. Oh, I've seen it. He does. Yeah. So, again, what? how Thanks, is Matt. that... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Matt Parrott. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how has that been sort of, again, building up to that point where, again, like, you're here and kicking ass, like, for, <laughs> for saying I'm not... Yes, you are doing a phenomenal job. Definitely the way to put it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what has it been like to sort of build that relationship and the... Uh, could, sorry... Got bug in my eye. <laughs> Shout out to the Nats. <laughs> <laughs> what has that been like for you? Sorry. Uh, so I started uh, with the Charlotte Knights back in 2018, and um, I went into it very blindly almost. I was like, I don't really know what I'm getting myself into, but I, I think I can hang. Like, I, I think I can do this. It'll be a learning curve for sure, but I'm also not one to shy away from a challenge. Um, <laughs> and it was it was really funny at the end of the 2018 season 
And Matt would even tell you this if he was sitting here right now. He came up to me. He's like, honestly, Holly, after the first day you're here, I said, she ain't going to make it. And then uh, <laughs> oh, 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 obviously oh. at the end of the season, he's like, I could not have been more wrong. Like that was like you've like well outperformed yourself um, throughout the season. So that was really encouraging for me. Uh, just kind of taking everything in day at a time, day in, day out, uh, game day, well, while they're away, while the teams are away, um, and then coming back in 2019 and kind of having that skill set of like, okay, now I'm in the groove of things and I'm learning and I'm still growing, obviously, um, which is what I want to keep doing. And then, yeah, that's this is kind of this weekend kind of feels like a culmination of everything that yeah, I've been learning, and 100%. then on top of that, I'm still learning this weekend, and it's been great. I know a few of us went over to the college yesterday to set up a field for just a scrimmage game. And we had some guys out there, like, teaching us, letting us learn different things, typical things I don't get to do out at the night stadium because I kind of have my own routine. Yeah. Um, but it was it was really interesting being out there and kind of just getting to take, take the time and look at all those fine details with things. So, yeah. yeah they said they said the ECU trip over there was phenomenal. Like, everybody we had a blast over there. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of yeah. jealous on this. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> um, what brought you to that job, honestly? Like, what was it you – got a phone call or you were like hey i want to try this maybe like what was it the newspaper no none of the above actually (laughs) matt's Um, using newspapers now (laughs) yeah yeah. um so actually i wanted to go to the charlotte knights and work with their just like game day promotional staff and by the time i realized i wanted to do that they had kind of already filled their roster for the season i was like well dang i'm gonna get my foot in the door somehow because i had always wanted to work in sports and i said well they have their grounds crew. I'm sure I could, you know, finagle my way in there somehow. <laughs> so. Opposite side of the coin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, complete opposite. And, uh, yeah, after talking to Matt and his assistant at the time, I was like, yeah, this actually sounds pretty fun. I think, yeah. like I said earlier, I think I can hang with it. And here you we are. You're doing fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, of course. Um, Maritza, with everything, you know, there's so many things that you take into account when it comes to being a groundskeeper. Uh, at this event, you made everybody cry the other day, by the way. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I do want to hear this story because, again, it, it's truly inspiring, you know, with everything that you talked about, with the experience you had and how you got to this point. Could you sort of tell that story again? Again, you don't have to, but I think it would be truly incredible for everybody to hear again and learn from what you've learned, you've experienced in your life and getting to this point where, again, all-female grounds crew. <laughs> It's just really, really awesome. Definitely. Okay, so a little backstory from everyone that obviously wasn't here. Um, there is a team, the Asian Pacific team. They came from the Philippines, and to my understanding, it took a lot for them to get here, obviously. It's a long travel. Mm-hmm. So these kids came all the way up here. They don't really have a big following, obviously. It's a little harder for them to get here. Can't imagine parents trying to travel with them. So they get here and we're noticing that they come up to start playing and they don't have hardly anyone in the stands. So we, as the grounds crew, we were like, okay, like we're their fans, we're gonna do it. And when I say that these girls are so, they're, I mean, they're itty bitty. So it's not hard to like root for them, right? So we're rooting for them and sadly their first game they lost. So after the game, um, I'm walking out as we all did to do post game work and switch to the next game. And the coach comes up to me, and he's talking to me, and I'm, I'm telling the girls, like, good job, because I'm, I've am i lost my voice at this point trying to cheer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking back and forth, and he's like, well, I just wanted to let you know, like, when you guys came out for your pregame setup, the girls were pointing at you. You know, they noticed you out of the crowd. And, you know, when you're in pregame for a game, like, you're, you're trying to keep your eyes on the prize, right? So I'm... I'm hearing what he's saying, but I'm not letting it like hit my heart because if I did, I was gonna start crying. <laughs> the, so, la- the laser, the nickname laser, <laughs> would be a little bit wobbly. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's hard to put lasers down when you have tears in your eyes. Um, so the conversation continued, and he ended up asking me if I would mind taking a picture with the girls, and I was like, it would be my pleasure. Would they mind taking one with me? So we're taking a picture, and then everyone's just turning around looking because they hadn't heard the backstory to it with me talking to the coach. <laughs> they just thought, okay, number one fan had to get a picture <laughs> with the team. Uh, 
so they lost, right? And we went on about our day. The next day, they came in for the loser bracket, which was yesterday. And, of course, I'm cheering. You, I want my girls to win yeah, at this point. Yeah, 100%. Um, and they did. We'll get to that fast part that they did. But I'll I'll lose a couple of details for time of like for sake of time. But you, essentially, you don't even lose any details. We have plenty of time. Essentially, what it boiled down to is, the coach told me that the girls loved the fact that they could look out to the field and see someone that looked more like them, when they're so far away from home. And I can't even give you words to describe how unbelievably important that was for me to hear. Because growing up, I didn't exactly have that. And starting, I mean, starting my career in turf grass, I didn't really have that, right? Of course, there's men everywhere, but you don't really see women, right? Or anyone closer to my complexion of skin tone. So that instantly sent me back to a childhood core memory where I remember looking for someone that looked more like me. And I'm happy, <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna look at Drew because he's teared up. Um, no, I'm not. I'm happy to know that I gave those girls that. And even happier because they won and got out of the loser bracket. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, that's that's always important, right? Right, Getting out of exactly. The loser bracket. No, and again, I I was I didn't want to say something when you told the story, but like you're doing that for so many people now, and it's not just girls, it's boys and everything in our program and other places that are looking to do stuff in turf. You are one of the people everybody looks up to, and Stop. I want you to know that. <laughs> you no, guys can't no, no, see no. It, but I, I will cry. <laughs> no, I know, but like with everything you've accomplished in such a short time, like you said, I'm not in this industry long enough. No, you have been, and what you're doing is, is you are reaching out and you're being there for those kids and being there for people all around. You know, I remember when we were on last time, you went to a FFA class like three yeah. days after, like. You, the fact that you're looking for the next generation and you're trying to help as many people as you can, you can't ask for a better person, you know, and I can't thank you enough for that. So. Well, I can't thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I think this podcast should be like the encouragement hot seat or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. Who's feeling down today? <laughs> yeah. Come on into the shed, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, with that, obviously, you, you're moving on to the next step and you're still with Charlotte and everything. What do you see sort of future goals or anything that you're really interested in? Obviously, we've talked, you're in communications, you work for a church, which is awesome. And there are so many great things that come with communications, especially something like a, a Meg Kruger who works for Pioneer is literally the communications director, right. you know, like, what do you see sort of down the line, whether it's turf, whether it's other professional goals, what would that be for you? And what do you hope to achieve? Uh, first, I will preface by saying that I do love my job with the church. Um, you guys are awesome. That's the church. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I work in communications there, and I support a few different ministries administratively. Uh, I love it. We have a, a great staff, um, really great people there, um, very willing to extend grace. But this honestly really started as a summer job for me, and it's kind of turned into a hobby mm -hmm. now, just being in turf grass management. Um, I'm... Oh, not 100% sure what those future plans look like. Um, I really do think it's whatever the Lord has in store for me. I, obviously, That's right. I would um, give all that glory back to Him in any mm -hmm. way that I could. Uh, he's made me able and given me opportunity after opportunity to come out here and do things just like this. Um, if that continues, great. If that doesn't continue, great. I'm happy either way. So, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, Marit, so where, where are we going? To the moon? What are we doing? Maybe. We'll see. The, you asked me this last time, and I slightly knew that I was going to St. Louis, but I yeah, can't tell thanks you that. Yeah, thanks for telling me. <laughs> not, even, not even after we were done recording. I, was, I saw a pop-up. I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, um, I've been very fortunate with the people that I've met, and what I've gotten to do, just like Holly said, like that's my favorite thing about this industry is that everyone in it wants to bring you in hey come work with me for this event it'll be awesome we'll have fun so i have no idea but what i do know is that i am enjoying the aspect that i talked about last time just putting as much into this next generation as i can so whatever that entails i mean i'm not gonna say 
that I've been talking about internships and everything like that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I'm cool. I'm pretty sure I texted you Julie's number the other night. <laughs> it's cool like, to I heard be... she wanted to work in soccer, and I was like, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. It's cool to not be the kid looking for an internship. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> and be the adult that might have one, right? That's weird. Uh, <laughs> it's a new sensation, really? right? <laughs> no, um... I'm the guy everybody calls. So yeah, I need interns. <laughs> Do you have kids? Can you send them? Literally, uh, there's. I forget who it was. Somebody was like in Massachusetts. I'm like, you know, they're high schoolers, right? Like, I, I totally get you need people, but they can't just come at 15 years old. I'm okay, thinking. but let's be honest. You train these kids. Like, we yes. all we all know what we're asking for. Uh, I, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know, I guess. So, Liz has done a good job here, so there might be calls about her. So. That's pretty <laughs> valid. Yeah. I have no idea. That's just the best answer that I could give. And I feel like that there's a lot of like great opportunity with that. You know, when people are trying to plan stuff out, things tend to like fall apart. Right. <laughs> At least me. <laughs> no, me too. Maybe uh, the first head groundskeeper of a major league soccer field. Maybe that's yeah. in the cards. You never know. <laughs> Josh, he's not coming for your job, just so you know. <laughs> no, Josh, definitely not. <laughs> the, next, the next one that is uh, a uh, new stadium. That way you'll have the background and setting it up already at St. Louis City. Yes. Remember that. Um, <laughs> so, you're t- again, you're talking about the next generation everything. Who was that for you when it came to the turf industry that sort of got you to this point? Your mentors that uh, – we talked about Justin last time uh, – couple other things um for both of you obviously matt parrott is there anyone else like even from this event that you sort of see as a mentor that's been there for you when it comes to work and being a part of the industry oh do you want me to write down a list really quick because i got i can do that but to answer you can just you can say the list how about that okay if i miss anyone i'm doing this off the very top of my head But to answer your original question, the person that inspired me to start it, when I did my first internship, I remember standing behind home plate with McLean Murphy with the Gwinnett Stripers, and he was like, so where do you want to go next? And I said, well, I want to work under Nicole Sheary. And I got to do that. So shout out to Nicole. Love you, Nicole. Wish you were here. We do very much. Thank you. Um, So, yeah, Nicole, she was one. I remember her being the first woman that I saw, and I was like, I can do that. Yeah. That seems awesome. Yep. Um, as far as mentors, I've had the best group of people pour into me. I've had all of my guys at the University of South Carolina, Clark, Justin, Tim. If I keep going, there's like 15 of them there. <laughs> I'll take up the rest of your time. But my guys at University of South Carolina, I mean, still, I talk to them almost every day. Yeah. They, they're checking in. They're looking out for me. And I'm fortunate because now I'm here with Josh, and everything that I've heard about Josh is nothing but amazing. <laughs> I'm not saying that to get brownie points with my boss. Yet, or, yes. or, yeah, good job, Josh. Way to live up. Way to live up to the hype. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I'm missing a lot of people. But, I mean, here even at this event, I mean, son, luckily I met her at SFMA. I love Rose. Sorry, son. <laughs> I'm so happy I didn't say Rose. <laughs> I oh my gosh! I would, and she still says it's absolutely fine. I'm like it's really not. Like I'm so <laughs> sorry. Go no, ahead. Um, I met Sun for the first time at SFMA. Yeah. And I have been extremely fortunate that I feel like she's almost taken me under her wing. Without a doubt, she's looking out for me, and because Sun does a lot of the things that I aspire to do with pouring into the next generation, she's mm-hmm. doing that with me. And then I can do that with the next. I yep. mean, all of these younger girls here, I am missing people. That's fine. But <laughs> if, if I if did not... If it comes up, you can just yeah. slur it out. Or <laughs> if I did not say your name, just know that I realize what you have done for me, and it does not go unnoticed. Absolutely. No, and again, there are so many people out there that had a little impact, you know. But exactly. Like, you don't really put the whole list together in time. <laughs> I need to have a list. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, Matt, <laughs> the, with being your boss, but who have you sort of seen and uh, even here, I mean, I'm sure you've met everyone and been a great time, but what has it been like for you with mentors when it comes to, even if it's not turf related, you know, just getting to this point? Yeah, Matt Parrott would be the main person. Uh, my network in the turf industry is pretty slim this weekend has 
double that, triple that. Uh, I don't know. Have or had that number once ago. Of, you got some of the best in that network now, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was great when I first came on. Matt's so great, uh, helping me learn, grow. Um, several different people who have come and gone through the nights as well. Um, and then, yeah, all the women here have been really great in lending a hand, lending encouragement. Uh, when I saw like a list of names of people who were coming out here, I saw Maritz's name on the list. And I was like, yes, that's the only person I know. So we're going to make this work. This is going to be a good time. This I want be you to fun. know I did the exact same thing. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Holly's there. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I don't know anyone here, but we're going to have a great time. Oh, wait, there's Maritza. I was like, I just met her a couple of months Saved. ago. So. Saved, yes. Yeah, 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 we're good. But uh, no, between Sun, Kelly, Sarah... Uh, Nina, Amy, all the all the older generation, the originals, oh, yeah, oh, the originals. They've um, definitely poured into me some, just with all their knowledge and expertise, and it's been greatly appreciated. Absolutely, they, and again, people like Sun and Kelly and whatnot. They're they're always like looking to create this sort of like camaraderie and experience with all of this, you know. Yeah. So things we um, need. Absolutely, and I, things that you guys have mastered here, honestly. <laughs> it's it's unlike anything else I've ever been to or been a part of, so again, I'm excited I'm here. So, um, With that, uh, obviously when you're talking about fields and taking care of things, what has it been like sort of for you, again, going from the <laughs> baseball and the love and the passion for that sort of to a, <laughs> son calls it a rectangle sport, yeah. <laughs> what has that been like for you, uh, getting sort of that transition? Obviously, you probably worked on soccer fields anyways with, at South Carolina, but no, really. No. They didn't let you leave the field? Well, yeah, I mean, I bounced around. Oh, okay. But I can say that I only paid in one single line on our soccer field. Really? It's just because I was so busy at baseball. Gotcha. Because I would jump between baseball and football, right? Oh, okay. So, two opposite seasons. Um. I can for sure say everything is still under construction pretty much. Yeah. So I'm getting that bit Please of experience. Please tell me they constructed a shop for you guys. Yes, okay. they did a very nice shop <laughs> Good. Uh -huh. in between our two practice pitches. Gotcha. But so like I said, everything's under construction. That's a piece of experience that I haven't gotten. And that's what I was telling some of the girls when mentioning like, hey, maybe you guys come up and see everything. Because how many times do you get to witness a new field being built a new stadium being built, a whole complex being built. Not often unless you're in that aspect of work, right? So I'm getting to see all of these things that I've never seen. And again, back to Josh, he's seen it all. He's done it all. So he's given these tips and tricks and showing what to look for, what you don't want, what you do want. And just that aspect, I didn't even realize how much I needed that because I didn't have any of it. So adding to that resume, I guess. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> I spent, I, whenever I did my internships, I always looked for somewhere that was going to have that experience that yeah. like, you don't get. So when I went to Pittsburgh with the Steelers, the uh, big thing was, was we were rolling out. We so It was my first day on the job. They're like, hey, we're moving this field to Latrobe, which is like the training camp site. Okay. They took Heinz Field out, and they put it on a different site. So it was like a sod farm, pretty nice. much. And I was like, do you do this often? They're like, no, this is the first time. like... <laughs> great <laughs> yeah. so i mean it that experience being able to again resod and be able to be a part of that i mean you don't get that in a lot of places especially with baseball mm -hmm. you know uh usually there is every 10 years or so or something <laughs> yeah, if they, well, if they yeah. can do it you know so um it, it's always good to try and get the different ex especially when we're young and like our inter well, internship well phase rounded. and whatnot right? yeah that's the point for sure for sure um Charlotte, okay. I'm just, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go to uh, with the stadium and everything. What has that been like? Sort of being a part of again. It's so immersed in like the city. You know, it's like right there downtown. Everybody's like, well, we can just go to the ballpark tonight. <laughs> like it's a normal thing. Uh, what has it been like? Again, Charlotte's just a great place uh, for you to be part of that and be able to put on a Friday night ball game and stuff like that for fans and for people all in the area. It has been quite the experience. Uh, our, the Charlotte Knights slogan, maybe I guess that's what you would call it, is the game, the view, the fun. That's so awesome. like, that's there's awesome. definitely a big baller. piece of like <laughs> the the stadium and just the whole city around us that uh, plays a big part into the experience of a Charlotte Knights game. Uh, so I'm kind of lucky to be a part of that. Um, 
making that dirt brown and the grass green kind of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta yeah. love it. Let's not do the opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we work real hard not to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. I, oh. I have a story when you're done. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, but uh, occasionally I do get some people who will come up to me and be like, you're, you're the only girl here or something. I'm like, well, yeah. But, like, I, I'm and. used to it. <laughs> like, I, I kind of hate that I'm used to it. Not really. Like like I said, no, I mesh yeah, well with the guys that I work with. But it's like, no, there's definitely room for women out here. They just either don't know about it, don't think they can do it or something like that. And, but they can. I mean, yeah. we're out here. We're 100%. getting it done. Yeah. Um, but I'm just I'm super lucky to be a part of that team. And yeah. I love the slogan. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> the, the yeah. yeah. Um, but back to the brown grass thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. So, uh... We are, it's called JV Lube Live. It's like a, a concert venue. And you know, like some concert venues have like a lawn, right? A mm-hmm. big one up on top where people can just sit and do whatever. So, uh, True Green got hired to spray out their parking lots. So, like, to kill all the weeds and everything because it's gravel and whatnot. They sprayed the lawn and all the lawns mm-hmm. inside and they killed the entire thing. They, like, it's just awful wow i was like that's gonna cost you enough money of uh <laughs> of your own i'm like what are you doing in Ouch. who in whose mind do you go let's put some roundup in this and see how this goes like, see how it goes <laughs> let's, let's see if we can kill this grass you know i was thus like i was so shocked that somebody would even think that's like Oh, this is what they hired us to do, you know? Hey, you don't know until you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Um, So, Holly, I have a question for you when it comes to work. Is there any way you could get, like, a week off or work remotely? I know it's weird. It'll make sense in a second. Uh, man. (laughs) That's not vacation. That won't cost you. That's that's the big (laughs) thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, Is there virtual options? it, it It might be feasible, maybe. Okay, so... It's in January. You right. should have Matt bring you to SFMA. One hundred percent. Because if you want to, if you want to really experience like this on a scale that's like crazy, like insane, make sure Matt takes you to SFMA. I think you'd have a blast, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. it sounds like you guys have a lot of fun. Out Last there. year was my first year, and I make the joke that I literally got passed around like COVID <laughs> because I met so many people. Yeah. People were coming up to me like, "Let me take you to meet so and so. So and so wants to meet so and so. Da 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 da. So yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. And I mean, Holly, that could be you. <laughs> that's all. We're I'm just saying. I'm you guys out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure Matt pays too. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry to do that to you, but <laughs> <laughs> trying to build. <laughs> Matt, that, that wasn't me. That was all there. It's all me. You can come after me. Maybe I'll help pay. You never know. Um, so, obviously, you were just talking about how it was like everybody's handing you around like, like COVID. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That just registered in my head. What has it meant to be a member of SFMA? You know, there are so many incredible things that come from that organization. And I talked about it with Son and Sarah, like the transition that's been happening with the name, now the CEO. What has it been like for you to be a part of the organization and how has it impacted sort of where your career has taken you? So pretty much, like I just said, like it was my first year going, this previous year. And like I said, I met Sun for the first time and we sat down and we're talking and she's asking me how it's going like she does. And the more that I talked to her and the more I spent time and I was with everyone there, just seeing how excited and in love with our career path that everyone is. I told Sun by the end of the week, I said, one day I'll be in your position and I want to be president of this organization. So I'm wholehearted for it. I mean, I love the idea of it. I love what it stands for and what it's pushing and what it wants to do. And it's so easy. I mean, you have students and they can immediately register for that. And it's something that's on their resume that as soon as it gets sent to anyone that's looking to hire, we see that. And it's like, okay, I am too. I love that. Let me give you a call. And it's simple, right? Mm -hmm. We're just this huge organization of people that are so in love with our career paths. And we meet up once a year to talk war stories from the previous year. (laughs) I love love how you said war stories. (laughs) Mother Nature's the enemy half the time. (laughs) Love her, hate her, we don't know. I'm pretty much hate over here. (laughs) (laughs) She never does it right for me. (laughs) I mean, we're, we're, we're sitting under a beautiful day today. 
Yeah. <laughs> This, is, this should be the norm. <laughs> yeah. This shouldn't, this shouldn't be hard for Mother Nature, you know? <laughs> no, I, I love everything the organization is standing for. As far as the big changes, I look forward to where we might shoot to go. You know, it's only up from here. It's my favorite thing to say. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> only, I mean, this event, you know, they are sponsored for it. And, I mean, when you look at going up, this is just the beginning, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know. That's... Uh, when Sun told me about it, I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be really cool. And it's going to be on full display. Yeah. And, again, my big thing about what I do as a teacher and what I'm trying to do, the fact you guys were on ESPN and all of these people across the world saw you and the Philippines girls, they're going to take that home. They're going to tell the stories about you and everything. And, wow, this grounds, uh, groundskeeper lady was, like, awesome. And she like, took <laughs> care of us and cheered for us and all that they'll have that for the rest of their lives, you know? And that's something that, uh, you know, with every, like last night, when we were coming back, I, the, the thing that happened, we're never going to forget. That's, that's going to be a, uh, freaking Liz. <laughs> Bless, uh, man, Liz. The, uh, do you know the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I don't, I don't want to put it on the podcast, so. No. But uh, it's, it's just awesome to see, and again, being able to have that impact, I appreciate everything you guys do with that. Um, anything exciting coming up for both of you, other than this, obviously? <laughs> I'm getting married in October. Ooh, now, some would say awesome. that's exciting. I am some. <laughs> <Maybe. some>. I <laughs> am some. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Congratulations Thank again, you. as I always. Thank you, I appreciate that. No, for sure. Uh, anything fun? No? Uh, my niece turns one in a couple of months. What's That's your niece's name? the only thing I got going. Her name is Mia. Happy so birthday, she's, Mia. She's happy the first, birthday. first niece, nephew, you know, first of first of the next generation for our family. So that would that be is, exciting. That is awesome. Um, so I usually wrap up on this last question just because uh, we obviously do this for our kids and other people listen. Um, but we always ask, uh, what are the best words of advice you can give someone that's either looking to get into the industry or just sort of moving forward with their lives, whether that's going to college, going to into trades or whatever, what would be your best words of advice just approaching sort of their next stage in life? Holly, I'll let you swing out the first <laughs> communication. <laughs> so in communications, they, they say like three, there are three C's to follow. Clear, concise, and darn, I forgot the third one. That's the wrong one. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, whatever. No, 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 <laughs> anyway, you're good, you're good. So I would talk in like super short sentences. So mine would just be like, go for the challenge. Um, That's don't, it. Try not Whew. to turn it down. I mean, you're going to make mistakes along the way, but there is more than likely a team around you who will support you, show you how to do it better, um, and just keep growing from that. So, yeah, don't be afraid of the challenge and always be willing to take that next step. Well, now I'm Absolutely. motivated to move forward. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, I would have to say the biggest thing that I like to tell people, and it's so simple, is we all, every single person that you look up to, have all been green at some point. We None of us knew what was going on from straight out of the gate. So I hate when I see younger people when they mess up mm -hmm. and they're just beating themselves. I mean, I did it to myself, yeah. right? You just beat yourself down. You're like, oh, man, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Look around the field. Every person out here has done it. And that's what I tell, like, any younger people that I'm around. You're not the first person that's ever done it. You won't be the last. And probably you're not the worst. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For so, sure. I mean, find motivation in that. You mess up, but you learn from your mistakes. And that's the point. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, excuse me. I'm excited for you guys to finish up the weekend and <laughs> I guess Monday's not the weekend, but <laughs> finish up the World Series. And, uh, again, keep inspiring. It's all we can ask for. Can so. I throw in a tidbit? Oh, 100%. Something that needs to be covered. What's covered? Holly, so. you saying that you're just part-time. Yeah. I think that that, not you specifically, but I think part-time work in our industry needs to be highlighted more than it really is. Yes. 1,000%. Because yeah. that is the best way to get, one, your foot in the door if you're early in your career. Mm. Two, 
you're getting experience. You're there. You're working. It's not like you're sitting in the office for like three hours <laughs> at work, really right? She's recruiting you hard right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, she proceed, is. proceed. No, but the church needs honestly, her, okay? <laughs> I won't take you from the church. <laughs> but for real, like no, one hundred percent. How many people could get ample amount of experience by working part time that just don't, for the sake of it being part time? Mm-hmm. It needs to be something that's pushed and pressed and celebrated because it's amazing. Like, it's this isn't your only job. This isn't yeah. your day job. But you're still going out because for the only reason other than <laughs> loving it. And look yeah. at how much experience you have. Yeah, it's definitely been awesome. And it's, uh, I mean, even the uh, managers, directors over turf, they would definitely push part-time as they have seasons coming in and exactly, out. Exactly, <laughs> so, right? 100%. Yeah, part-time is sometimes the and way that, to go. Like, that's still yeah, something that slapped on your resume, Right, yeah, and yeah. I, I think it needs to be pushed more for our younger generations coming in. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I know. I mean, <laughs> well, I get to work you have your kids working, without yeah. a doubt. But it gets you that experience, so you're not fresh out of school and you don't have anything, and you're hoping to get like a big job. That helps you do it. So well, that's what I, yeah, I'm I mean, like advising on. It's funny because I, I tell my kids like, if you have a job, like again, even if it's like for a few months, like. They don't really look at the time frame. No. They see the name. Hey, I work for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, what did hey, you learn? I'm, yeah. yeah. We, again, they're not really caring about like time frames and whatnot, but like the name, the 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 stature of that, the Charlotte Knights. Everybody knows they're one of the best ground crews doubt. in the nation. Like that's something that carries a lot of weight when it comes to doing something different or approaching a job in the industry, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help him, right? So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I think by this, she's telling me to stay in part-time. She, no, mm, I just, I, I, all I heard Holly's was like, like part-time, staying. we need part-time, let's go part-time. <laughs> no, I'm saying I love the way, I love the way that you started your career yeah. with part-time. Yeah. And I think ne- people need to see that that is an option. You do not have to go straight into a full-time job and it yeah. be 100%. your only like part of life right yeah, yeah for you have sure. the, your whole life to work but part time you get part a little time. time at work get a little yep. time at home <laughs> yeah well i can't thank you guys enough i really appreciate you taking the time and again enjoy the rest of the world series and keep kicking ass thank you for cool. being here thank you of course. there we go all right little bonus to this episode with miss maritza martinez she's back in st louis at work uh, and she has a couple of things she wants to talk about post event. Obviously it's a, it's really cool to have the moments after the event and after the first all female grounds crew to take out, uh, take in really like the overall, like history and what just happened. So Maritza, what has it been like to go back to work after having such an impactful, uh, experience I mean, especially for you and with everything, with the Philippines and everything that you experienced down there in Greenville, what has it been like for you to come back and sort of just take it all in? So every interview, I guess, or quote that I might have had while we were down there, I kept saying, I can't like describe, I can't give you words, you know, to how we're all feeling. And universally, I just said, once we all get back to our homes and our jobs, I think we'll all be able to like step back and figure out the exact words that we were all feeling because in that moment, you're just taking in the moment. So getting back here um, last week, my ownership, they sent us to go to a food bank and we had the opportunity to spend all day working at a food bank. So in turn, I got the opportunity to tell people at my job, you know, where I had been, what we had all been doing. And the universal phrase kept going around, you guys are trailblazers. What you're doing is amazing. We love to see it. We love to hear about it. What's your next event? (laughs) So, of course, um, I got laughed at the whole week we were there because Nina kept saying every time she looked at me, she could see my wheels spinning. And that's the truth. I mean, people ask me, what are you guys planning next? And, of course, I have no idea what direction Sun's going to want to go in. But I'm nothing but excited for the next event. I mean, how could you not after spending an entire week doing what we all did, having the experience that we all had, nothing but excitement for the next. (laughs) Absolutely. And I, I, uh, it's funny because I keep saying the same thing over and over again, which is why when I was talking to you before about like, are they any good, like the podcast, (laughs) I'm like, I think I've said this too many times, but (laughs) again, like the joy that everyone had during the week and again what was not the best like week when it comes to weather and everything you know <laughs> speaking 
I've got my extra tufts right here. Oh, I see them. You I know? see them. They were not bought. They were already <laughs> had. Um, <laughs> but again, like just having those experiences and just again being able to talk to everybody and how they're like, oh, this is incredible. Uh, this is the highlight of my career. People like uh Amy and Nina, like they've been waiting so long for something like this and for someone like a snap and chat to be able to just hop on with like first two, three months of their careers into turf, you know, it's incredible to see how far all of this has come and where you've been able to accomplish and bring that back to St. Louis. Uh, and again, one of the big things that you and I had talked about in the original podcast and now just the overall idea of a mentor and it's not just who your mentors are, but who you could be mentoring in the future and things like that. What are some of those mentors that you really look up to that we sort of discussed already, but again, that have had that impact that have brought you to this point where, again, you are a part of the first ever all female Browns crew? Well, I think everyone should kind of know the backstory. Um, every time Drew has asked me this question, I have danced around it. I, I'm not going to say like vague answers, but I've danced around it because I have people that have been in my career and my life that the words just escape me. It's hard to give good enough sentences and words to thank these people that have done so much for me. But I've spent the last few days thinking about it and I, I reached out to him and I was like, okay, I, I have my answer. <laughs> so I'm very fortunate to, I started my career kind of young and I've had a lot of people feed into me. But when I started, I knew exactly who I wanted to work for and where I wanted to go. And that was with Nicole Sheary. So she has been incredibly fundamental in my career. And I, I really just can't express enough to her for my foundation that she gave me. Right. But now I'm um, segueing. I have two fun fact. I have two mentors that I am exclusively looking up to right now because these two have just fed into me along with Nicole. I'm going to say son. Um, I haven't even known son that long and the little bit of time that I've known her, she has done anything and everything to put my name out there, to give me advice, to make me feel comfortable with who I am in this career. And she's given me things other than a fundamental balance of my work life that I, I can't really thank her enough for. So thank you, son. Thank you, Nicole. You guys have started my career out amazing. And one day, <laughs> one day I'm going to sit down when I have a couple kids under me that I'm trying to mentor and I'm going to tell them all the things that you guys inspired me to do. And hopefully I can make as much of an impact with them as you guys have made with me. Well, I can tell you that you've already had an impact on a lot of different people. Um, and again, we talked back when you were with South Carolina and how you went to an agricultural class to just show, again, I, I say it way too often. It seems to be kind of a redundant thing that I keep doing, <laughs> but <laughs> it's it takes a moment. It takes a moment in a kid's life where something just flips on. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't appreciate the fact that these moments can be brought to them by us you at know? any minute, any moment, any moment. It might have been a moment when we were at the Salt Bowl League World Series and one of the younger kids. And there was just a moment where something clicked and it was you helping them get work through something or understand. Again, this is how I do it. Maybe there's some other way, but they take to that and they are like this is something i really could do um and someone that you made a huge impression on that you may not have known before was uh one of my kids julie um <laughs> and we've been working on it with uh, the recruitment side of things <laughs> um with everything when you're talking to again and even you can be specific to younger females and to work in this industry what are some of the things that you think uh, you provide in your situation in St. Louis and that you can help sort of guide them to that next chapter? Um, I know with Julie, like we've, I, I told you I had lunch with her the other day after <laughs> the event. Um, she is very much, I love football and it is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and it is like, 
her goal is honestly to become the first NFL head groundskeeper that is a female. I love that. But she's also very open to different things and seeing them now. And I've always explained that to my kids. It's like when you're young, when you're doing things, like test the water, see what you want to do. Like she she was in a golf course this summer. She figured out, yep, that's not for me. Like <laughs> I already told her that because I know her very well. But it's good she took the time to try and figure out what is going to be that next Without step. Doubt. So what is it about your situation, what you're doing that could provide a great avenue for someone like Julie? That's a tough one. That's a good question. There you um, go. So I'll I have, to, I have to come up with some good questions because I keep <laughs> asking the same ones, you know? You, you stump us a little bit. I'll segue back to the moments that you were talking about, and I'll reference my moments with Nicole and son. Um, so again, I, I started out my career knowing that I wanted to work under Nicole at some point in my career. And one night at like nine o'clock at night, guess who I get a call from? Nicole Sheary. So I'm, I'm standing in two of my friend's yard in their front yard and sh- I'm just shaking. Literally. I'm like, she says, Hey, this is Nicole Sheary from the Orioles. And I almost dropped my phone to the ground. So in that conversation, I can look back and know that that was a pivotal moment in my career. That was like the moment that she probably just thought was just a phone call. And then there's me like, Whoa, what am I doing? And then another moment that we were just saying, you know, you never know what these smaller moments are going to mean. I'm sitting at SFMA literally a few months ago by myself and who comes walking up son. And we had never met before, but she took the initiative to sit down and just talk to me. And at that point I was like, okay, another pivot moment. What is going on? And things have been rolling really well. I ended up here in St. Louis. And like I said, I have a lot to think between those two women right there, but I think something that I might be able to give these kids, I'm not even going to say these kids, these women, right, is that I kind of joked about this, is that I fall into almost an in-between age. I'm just old enough with, with them that they can like, okay, she's older than us, but I'm just young enough where they're like, okay, we can still cut up with her because I look at the women that I look up to and sometimes it's almost intimidating because it's like, okay, this is, this is what I'm trying to work up to. This is who I'm trying to be. And I'm just close enough to the start of my career where the girls can like see my trail from where I've been and where I've gone, where it's not as as nearly intimate as intimidating as I feel like I kind of went through. So I hope, I hope that's a decent enough answer is that I'm close enough to them where we almost share the same mentality for the starts of our careers. Definitely. I mean, when you talk about um, the females that are in this industry, there are very few at your age. You know, there's Leah, there's Morgan, there's you that are like that beginning stage, but also veteran enough to know everything that a Josh McPherson knows, you know, but always provided an opportunity to learn more alongside, again, Mm -hmm. one of the greats, you know, so I couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, with everything, I can't. I gotta stop saying that. You'll hear, <laughs> you'll hear that in Leah's episode. She made fun of me for that. Um, what is it that you want someone like Julie to know about the again the internship that you provide that will take it to the next level? So I think a lot of times people that host internships, literally not even in our career, just across the board, any jobs, um, you get nervous to mess up right? You lose focus on the fact that that's literally what an internship's for is to mess up. So um, I would definitely say that coming here, whether this be Julie or whoever I might hear from, this is a safe place that you can mess up before you get into your big girl job, right? That Where it matters the most, like you can come here, you can mess up, we can teach you, you know, why you messed up, here's how you fix it. And you move on from that without sake of like worrying that the rest of your career might be over because you did something just off the wall that every every person in the industry has probably done, if not worse. Um, so I, I I feel like comfort in itself can definitely come out of this. Um, like I said, I've only worked for one other woman, and that would be Nicole. So that 
that in itself was just a wild, wild experience because you go in and you're like, okay, my boss is a woman. I feel a lot more comfortable. And if Julie wanted to come here, she'd get that. If any other girl wanted to come here, she'd get that. If a guy wanted to come here, they'd get the same comfort that I was just saying, without a doubt. All right, Julie, sign on the dotted <laughs> line. Let's get this over and done with. I know you have all summer or all school year, but we can make get this done now. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time. Obviously, uh, it was great to be a part of it and to be able to talk to you afterwards just to make sure that you got everything out that you wanted to. Uh, and again, I can't thank you enough for all that you do for kids in our program and being an inspiration to them. Uh, not just Julie, but again, students now that we have. So I can't thank you enough. Well, like like I tell you, every time I talk to you, I can't really thank you enough for feeding into like the next generation because that's that's my big thing that I love that I'm pushing for is the next generation. And you're just doing it. I mean, you, you're providing these kids. You're teaching these kids. You're setting them up for nothing but success. So we all have a thanks to you. <laughs> I like to think that I might actually teach something. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in the next few years, but. Oh boy. 